have a wonderful evening and welcome to the introduction to Pony IDE. Pony IDE is the successor of the Lua IDE, which you might already know. Just to keep you updated, the major changes are the new UI you can see here, a server mode to code in Mission Lua, and some new Lua Learn videos. We have uh, some enhancement around the detailed documentation, including a search. We have more realistic drawing. This is the comparison between the original game, which is the image in the center, the old IDE on the bottom with zoom, on the right without zoom, and the new IDE on the left with zoom and on the top without zoom. A more realistic map and highlighting errors in the code when you run into a blue screen error. For all the new people, we have a yeah a short introduction to the whole page. Um, first of all, the UI itself can be completely resized and customized. You have a vertical bar and two horizontal bars to adjust the sizes of the four views here. You can switch those tasks to be somewhere else for example you can move the examples to the bottom left you can move them back as well and always reset them by hitting the reset button which will reset everything in the IDE. The settings and the adjustments to the sizing will be stored persistently in your browser unless you use a private mode or incognito mode or you manually delete the website data. Everything can be shared with this button. Uh, I'm gonna explain that to you in a second. We have multiple editors available to you. There's the normal editor, the minified editor. Let me just load some code. You can choose a minification. The conservative will not break any code for sure. The aggressive one is that is the normal one and the aggressive one will replace some variable names so it might break something it's happening very rarely so normally it works fine um, but the output code has way less uh, characters that are used so you have more space you can also unminify the code which is quite helpful if it is, as you can see, it's pretty much the code that we see here. Um, then we have the UI builder. It's meant for people that are not able to create their own Lua code. Instead, they just have a very simple way to create some yeah, simple UIs. And you can move those things around, you can resize them, and you can also delete them. Or you can change the order. Let's see, there we go. If you think you're done, you can generate the Lua code and either run it directly, just make sure that it doesn't hit the limit of 4096 characters when you put it into game, or you can just copy it and also minify it. If you want to execute code, you just select the tab that you want to execute. In this case, we take the normal editor. By the way, you have multiple shortcuts that you can use with uh, Control Z, Control Y to go to undo and redo. You can search, you can, with Control F, you can replace Control H. And you can adjust the font sizes, go full screen, all that kind of stuff. If you want to run, just click the start button here. It will indicate which code is being run by showing it yellow. In the bottom right, you can now see the monitor. We currently are running on the smallest monitor. And we have a black outline, which is just for development. That's the overflow. We can disable that. But for development, it's quite nice to have it. We can choose a bigger monitor. And finally, Right now we have well, like one pixel of the monitor is exactly one pixel of your screen, but you can use a virtual zoom to just increase that image, which helps you developing it. 
as you can see it is not pixel perfect in the game it will look a little bit different but comparing to the old Lua IDE it's way more precise right now. If you're executing the code you can also pause it here which means it will not be executed further. You can then click the step forward button which means it executes exactly one tick and one draw. Just stop it, reload the code, we pause, let's show the console. We pause the script, we go one step forward and we see only one tick is executed. Extremely helpful for debugging. You can adjust the speed, the tick speed and also the FPS speed, the speed it's drawn in the settings. In the console, yes, you can see error messages if you have the blue screen. You can see... Let's just uh, create a small blue screen here. There we go. It marks you the error, the line. Um, you can print out to the console for debugging reasons. You can change the color. You can do some timings to see how long methods need to run. And you will get some hints for hints for notification. Uh, sorry, for performance um, notification hints. Uh, what you can do to improve, for example, if uh, your on tick function takes a long time, which will probably slow down your your game. If you want to enable the touch screens for the monitor, you can do that here in the settings. Just enable both touch screens. You will see that the inputs will be added automatically, and if the script is running, you can see that uh, you get this information here for the touch screen. Of course, only if the script is running and you don't produce any uh, mistakes. There we go. The documentation will help you to find APIs or functions that are provided by either the Lua API or by the game itself or even for this Pony IDE. For example, timing, printing, all that kind of stuff. Or the string library. If you want to search for something specific like circles, just enter circles, hit the enter button and it will filter the documentation. The auto completion is done in the code, so if you just cl or click control space or command space, it will show you different options, for example the F input and then set boolean. There is a small description here, the big description, the detailed one is in the documentation tab, but this will help you a lot. You can define properties just like in a microcontroller, give it a name and add it. You can set up inputs, add new ones, change a label which makes it easier to you, for you to um, yeah, define what this input will be connected to later, maybe a compass, who knows. The number inputs can have different sliders, uh, a slider or just a number input. Um, you can define minimums, maximum steps and you can let it automatically move. Um, the outputs will be generated automatically depending on your script. For example, in the onTick function we set the output boolean. 1 to true and the number 5 to pi. Um, that's it for the outputs. Then we have the learn section which is pretty similar to the old Lua ID but we also added a nice Stormworks Lua tutorial, the new one from Team Insanity which I helped to work on to create. Um, I can just uh, suggest to you if you're new to Stormworks Lua or Lua 
um, just open up these videos, um, watch them, and you will know everything. We also have the official manuals over here, which uh, includes a link to the Lua manual, the Stormworks Lua manual I've written on the Stormworks wiki, and also the appendix of the Lua, like you will find this in the Lua help tab. Um, this is like the appendix to the normal documentation in game. Last but not least, we have the server mode. If you click this button and switch the mode, um, you will be in the server mode. That means you cannot execute any script anymore. You only have the um, yeah function to write code and minify it. You have the adjusted documentation, the special documentation only for server Lua, mission Lua. It's still um, work in progress since there is uh, no full documentation available to the public yet. Whatever you share, click the share button, all the settings that you did, all the codes, all the layouting, everything will be shared. This means if anyone, you can just give him that link, um, if anyone opens that URL, he will see exactly the same that you see right now. You cannot edit those share codes, but if you need to edit something or change something, just create a new share code and it will be fine. Finally, if you open up the navigation, you can find my contact information. You can get a link to my other Stormworks tools. You can download this page for offline use. Just make sure you keep it updated from time to time. You can view the source code or write up some issues if you have any problems. Um, or take a look at this special page, how to set up the Stormworks HTTP API for this Pony ID. That's it from me. Have fun using the Pony ID. Thank you.